Namaste viewers. I am Rekha Rao from India, a researcher in ancient history and archaeology. Welcome to the course on the fundamentals of Indian temple architecture. This is topic seven of an eight part series. In this session, we explore how the knowledge of yoga finds a place in the Indian temples cultures. Yoga is a systematic and scientific means of maintaining the wellness of body and mind. The Sanskrit term yoga means to join. It intends to harmonize the body with the mind. Yoga helps to elevate the state of mind from a wandering state to a focused state. The sage Patanjali of 2nd century BCE had researched the science of health of body, mind and spirit. He had prescribed eight fundamental observances that were mandatory before the practice of yoga. In this topic, we explore the significance of the three, three of the eight fundamental observances that are depicted in temple sculptures. Firstly, we see how a fundamental step of cleaning the physical body and the mind are depicted in sculptures. Then we explore the different body postures called asanas that are depicted in sculptures. Thirdly, we see how the breathing techniques are depicted in sculptures that are to be practiced for wellness of body and mind. Let's first study the three pictures of slide one. In the first picture, we explore the fundamental step of cleanliness of physical body. We also examine why it was given such importance in yoga. The second and third pictures are about the cleanliness of mind. The first picture is a sculpture from Rani Kevau, a staple of 11th century CE. The second and third pictures are from Khajuraho group of temples. Both are recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. In the first picture, a woman is with twin babies. According to Yoga Sutra, pure body and mind are like twin babies, equally essential to promote cheerfulness. One baby is near her foot. The lady pours water from the purifying jet on the anal part of the baby, which is, a, which is typically how Indians clean the anal region after defecation. This theme depicting the cleanliness of physical body is called Bahya Shaucha in Sanskrit. The other child in her arm holds two balls in both hands, depicting a happy state of mind and happiness with the attendant. Hindu spirituality believes that a pure mind can only exist in a pure body and a clean body promotes purity of thought. When neglected, the body gets clogged with wastes which then creates an imbalance in the nervous system. In a physiological sense, the removing waste, such as excreta urine on regular basis is essential for a healthy body. Let's now study the second and the third pictures. These pictures depict cleanliness of mind called Antarika Shaucha. A scorpion is depicted on the costume of the woman in both cultures and is approaching her sex organ. Her face shows agony. The scorpion is symbolic of lust, which is one of the negativity of the mind. The practice of yoga classifies six negative enemies of the mind, such as lust, anger, greed, envy, arrogance, and jealousy. If neglected, these negative enemies of the mind can lead to a painful sting, such as that of a scorpion. The sage Patanjali advocated removal of these negatives, negativities related to the mind prior to the practicing yoga. This theme can be seen in many temples of India. This was a means of educating the broader community about the importance of a clean body and mind. Let's now explore slide two. This slide illustrates how a teacher trained his students on the physical postures called asanas for meditation. The posture depicted in sculpture is shown in the line drawing in the middle picture. The third picture to the right is 
another temple sculpture depicting the same sitting posture. The panel on the left is from the temple of Kajuraho in central India from 11th century CE. The teacher Siddhacharya is teaching the asanas and some specific hand gestures called mudras to his disciples. They are to be practiced before the commencement of meditation. The teacher is demonstrating a cross leg posture called Siddhasana. Siddhasana improves the posture, lengthens the spine, and increases flexibility of hip and knee muscles. The specific hand gestures are practiced to promote mindfulness. All disciples are practicing this posture. Such asanas and hand mudras were commonly depicted in Indian temples to educate the public about how to train the body. We now explore slide three for two more postures. The first picture in slide three is a standing posture called Vrikshasana, where the body is balanced on one leg and lifting the other up to knee level. Vriksha in Sanskrit means a tree. This posture eliminates the movement of the body and is ideal for the practice of meditation. This posture is depicted in many temples to show how yogis and saints meditated. The second picture of this slide is a panel that shows a posture called Artha Matsyendrasana, which gives a twist in the body. This yoga posture with a twist in the torso is practiced to bring a change in thought process from the worldly to a focused and evolved phase. Let's now study slide four. This panel depicts breathing techniques also known as pranayama. The panel is from Kajuraho group of temples, a UNESCO World Heritage Site from 11th century CE in central India. According to yoga practice, the systematic breathing techniques are called pranayama. The words prana meaning the life force and ayama to lengthen or regulate make up pranayama. Regular practice of pranayama controls the rhythm of inhalation and exhalation. It stabilizes the flow of life force in our blood vessels and brings the wandering mind under control. This panel demonstrates three phases of deep breathing exercises, inhalation, retention, and exhalation of breath. The central figure is the teacher called Acharya. He holds the compilation of palm leaf scriptures in his left hand. His belly is bloated tight like a pot depicting the retention of breath after a deep inhalation. With the prolonged retention of breath, the body gains control over the muscles of the body. A similar figure to the left shows the next phase of slow, deep exhalation called Rechaka, where the tummy is withdrawn and moving near the back. He shows the ideal sitting posture for pranayama called Gomukhasana. The standing figure to the right shows the breathing technique of deep inhalation by holding the nose as required in alternate nostril breathing technique called anuloma viloma. The other sitting figure holds his hands near the chest as namaskara mudra indicating reverence. The stages of pranayama were depicted in a temple sculpture to educate the public about the importance of systematic breathing to promote good health. Let's now summarize the key learnings from this talk. Yoga in the form of body postures and hand gestures were commonly depicted in Indian temples to educate the general public about the benefits of clean body and mind. These depictions also illustrated the ideal postures for meditation along with the breathing techniques to gain control over the physical body, which eventually leads to a stabilized state of mind. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you in the next topic.